Hey guys, what's up? My name is Blinks, and today I want to look at a draft that uh, we drafted versus Cognitive in Here's of the Storm America Champions, and kind of talk through it, uh, talk to you guys, talk to you guys what you were thinking about, what they were thinking about. So they start off with a KT ban, which was really strange for us, because a lot of people don't ban KT first, and we didn't really play KT, so we already thought that something weird was going on. And even off of that first ban, we thought that maybe they would go tankless comp. So, two reasons for that. Obviously, first, KT puts out a lot of damage, and he puts out AoE damage. So, tankless comp usually involves putting all your healing into one person, Illidan, in their case, and just kind of keeping him alive. Whereas with KT, you can hit more than one hero, and things can you know go south really, really quickly. So, uh, we see that they first pick Jaina, which is obviously a really, really good first pick. Um, they kind of sacrifice a little bit by this, by not going Uther. Because right now I think Uther is the strongest support in the game, one of the best heroes in the game. Divine Shield is really, 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 really good. So we go ahead and pick up Uther to deny them Uther, because Uther is also very good in a tankless comp. And after that, we pick up Leoric just because he has incredible wave clear, uh, really good on this map, good at boss fights, just probably probably the best tank in the game right now. I think all teams would agree that Leoric is by far the best tank in the game. His wave clear lets you roam as soon as you clear a wave. And then let's see what else. He can 1v1 most heroes. He doesn't die, and when he does die, he comes back almost immediately. So at this point, we were expecting... Illidan and Abathur from them. And I do believe that that is exactly what they picked. And now we see that they have this core of Jaina, Abathur, Illidan. And we really studied their games before. We knew that they liked going tankless. We knew that they were going to like kind of try something off against us. Because usually when we play them straight up, we are the ones that end up winning. So here we do a really, really, really important ban, and that ban is Brightwing. So as you guys are going to see later, our key to countering that comp on this map was taking Asbidan with Asbidan Laser, and they had been picking Brightwing with their comp uh, previously that day, and also previously in practice. And we knew that Polymorph was basically the only thing that could stop Asbidan Laser if they were to go um, tankless. Because we have a uh, kind of a good idea where they're going to go. We knew they were going to go TAS, right? So we did. We knew they wouldn't have any interrupts. So we pick up Sylvanas once again to kind of counter the Illidan. Because, you know, as slippery as Illidan is and as hard as he has to kill, if you silence him and he doesn't have evasion up and he doesn't have six sense up and he can't meta, he will die really, really quickly. Um, at this point, I think we're talking about, like, yeah, all right, we got it. We got it. We know what they're going to do. We got it. And uh, we picked a noob kind of for the same reason, just lots of stuns, lots of lockdown. And also, uh, we had the option of going web wrap if we wanted it, which lets those fights where we all focus down Illidan or Jaina or somebody else go even, even smoother. So here, uh, their last two picks are Tassadar and Rhaegar. And it was just a really, really clutch that they picked Rhaegar. I don't... The only, the only hero they could have picked as a support um, that had interrupts for Asban Laser would have been like Malfurion with Twilight Dream, which obviously totally isn't worth it. So, oh, okay, and... I, I think the crowd was like cheering when they picked Tassadar because they were like, oh my god, tankless. But at this point, like, look at their team. They have literally zero interrupts. The The only thing they have that can possibly interrupt, uh, what's it called, Asmin Analyzer, is meta, right? Because meta, like, mini stuns when it hits. So, at this point, we're feeling really, really confident. I think that maybe even Cognitive knew that we were going to go Asmodan. Because uh, it's not like we kept that comp a secret, but really the trick to this game was when, you ha when you're when you in the position to laser Illidan, you don't do it until he metas. So we have the rest of our team to pressure him. 
uh, you know, between Leoric Life Drain, Sylvanas is really, really good against Illidan, damage from Anubarak and Uther Stuns. So we can pressure him down and get him low without uh, actually using laser on him. And once he metas, once they have literally no stuns, or stuns on their team left, we um, <laughs> we laser him, and he bas he really can't do anything. Because, I mean, y you can heal through that, right? You can heal uh, through that with an Ancestral. Oh yeah, there we go, Asmina, baby. But it, but it's just gonna like come right back down again. And all right, we can pause here. And uh, hello, all right. And even when uh, so so their their strategy kind of this game was to like, all right, let's ignore Asmina because we can't kill him and I'll just laser. So they would go on me as Uther or on Sylvanas. And in that case, we would just we would literally run circles around the Asmodan. And it really didn't matter who Illidan was on, because he was standing next to Asmodee and getting lasered, and just, like, th there was really, really nothing they could do. Um, one really, one important thing to note, I'm sure people noticed this, but we did not go stacking Asmodee, we went laser build Asmodee and pushing Asmodee. And what that did is that let us get to the, uh, what's it called? That let us get to the level 10 mark, I think, like, a level and a half up, maybe two levels up just because we were able to push so hard. So not only were we pushing as three, as Sylvanas, Asmodee, and Uther top, but we were also putting generals in other lanes, and every time there was a tribute fight, we would uh, put generals in other lanes. I think we, I think this game we rotated four to tributes and kept one pushing usually, and it just ended up working really, really well. Uh, we got an early lead, and Illidan comps aren't very good when they're behind, and I think especially tankless Illidan comps struggle when they're behind. If you're a level up with an Illidan comp, you are, you're like in heaven. You're in the best possible spot you can be. But when you're behind, there's just not a lot they can do. So hopefully that gave you guys some insight into our drafts. I am going to be doing other draft videos and teamfight videos, as well as probably full game analyses later uh, this week. I haven't quite decided on the order I want to do them in yet, so... Please hit me up in the comments below. Tell me what kind of stuff you'd like to see from this weekend. I'm trying to get my hands on replays so we can go over stuff in like really, really, really detailed. Uh, as always, if you guys like the video, please like and subscribe. Don't forget to check me out on Twitch. And uh, thanks for watching. I will see you guys next time. Bye.